Hello bakers and welcome to Upside Down. Today we are going to be checking the path tracer inside Unreal Engine. This is a feature which is available from Unreal Engine 4.27. If you are using some of the older versions, this is something which is not going to be available for you. Before jumping into the video, subscribe so that you don't miss some of the upcoming tutorials. Now let's roll the intro. So today we are going to be looking into the scene that you can see at the moment on the screen. I'm going to go over some of the settings and how exactly to set up the path tracer and as well what I did here to get such lights. But before path tracer is available to be used inside Unreal, we need to go and activate it from the settings. This means that the first thing that we need to do is go into edit, project settings and we need to enable ray trace so ray tracing needs to be activated for your project in order for path tracer to be available and the other thing that we need to do is if we scroll down i'm just going to click the hex button and the other thing that we need to do i'm just going to remove the search from here is to scroll down and we need to find a section that says windows over here and inside windows we need to change our default air hi from the default one to direct x12 usually this is something which you will get automatically a pop-up on the bottom and once you restarted it everything will be enabled now that you activated everything you can see that the scene at the back is looking a little bit different than before this is because at the moment i'm using the default lit mode which is inside unreal I have my scene and lights set it up to movable, but this is of course something which can be used for with backlights. It doesn't really matter because Path Tracer is anyway going to calculate the lights the moment that we activated it. There is one more element that we are going to need inside the scene before jumping and doing our renders with a higher quality. And this is a post-process volume. We need the post-process volume because inside the post-process volume there is a section which is controlling the path tracing. Here in the search details I'm just going to write path and you can see that in rendering features there is this path tracing and these are all the settings that we are going to have for the path tracer. We have a number of bounces and then we have number of samples per pixel. So these are values that we can control and also we have a denoiser which is activated by default. This is something which can be used to get a smoother, nicer image, although I prefer to have a little bit of noise because it makes the renders and everything a little bit better and more realistic. The denoise is something which, by the way, I don't recommend if you would like to make animations because uh, in each frame the denoise is going to calculate the frame differently and then you're going to get a little bit of some trembling or something like this inside your frames. So if you're doing animation, you need to deactivate the denoiser. I'm just going to deactivate it anyway at the moment. And then the other thing about the max bounces is of course how many times our light is going to bounce. And the samples per pixel is something which we need to adjust depending on our scene. Because sometimes we might not need such high number, so if we have a nicely lit scene, and especially if the scene is an exterior one, we might get with just a lower number. But for this scene specifically, I just have one directional light, which doesn't give a lot of light in the scene, and a couple of spotlights. That's why I increased a little bit more the samples, just so that I can get better quality without the need of adding denoiser. The max bounces is something which is important if you are doing materials that have transparency, like for example glass. Before doing this, let's just activate our path tracing and see exactly what is the difference. So, as I mentioned, this at the moment is the default render, but if we change it from lit mode and go over here, because we restarted and enabled the ray tracing at path tracing, this option is going to be available. So, I'm just clicking on path tracer, and you can see that it starts little by little clearing the frame. This reminds a lot how the GPU rendering in some of the softwares, like for example 3ds Max works, and it's pretty much actually doing the same. So if I just go out from this camera and move around, you can see that every time it starts clearing the frame from the very beginning. 
So uh, it's something which how much it's going to clear it, it depends on the samples that you have per pixel. So the moment that it hits this mark, it's going to stop clearing it. And because we don't have the denoiser activated, it's going to leave it as it is. But if I activate the denoiser, you can see that at the moment we have a little bit of noise on the table and as well on the floor. So if I activate the denoiser, you will notice that now it's starting to clear the frame. And at some point when it goes through all the samples for pixels, it's going to apply the denoiser on the final render. So now everything has been calculated and the denoiser has been applied. You can see that we get a lot, a lot cleaner result, but it's something which I don't really like to use because you lose a little bit some of the details. Of course, if this is the result and if you're doing, let's say, a scene which is a little bit more stylized or you just want a really, really sharp and clean uh, look of everything that you're doing, it's something that you can use. But other than that, uh, I really uh, just turned it off. Now that we looked how the path tracer looks and how we can activate it and some of the settings that we have, I want to talk about how exactly we are going to get those frames rendered. So you will see that if we go from the drop down and go to high resolution screenshots and take the screenshots in the normal way that you usually do, you're going to get the first frame and a very noisy picture because it's not going to have all the calculations that are being done. There is a different way for rendering everything with your path tracer. And for using it, we need to have here created a level sequence. So I'm just going to click add level sequence and then I'm just going to save this inside my project somewhere. And once we have created a level sequence, I'm going to add the camera from which I would like to render it. So in my case, this is camera actor number five. So I'm just going to drag and drop it over here. And you can see that now we have the shot that we had in the very beginning. And in order for us to render it, what we need to do is go to the render movie sequence. So I'm just going to click it. Here we can select instead of having an AV, having a PNG. Of course, if you're doing a cinematic, we can use the AV, although I prefer usually to render my cinematics into a PNG. This way we are going to have a whole sequence and then it's very easily, there are quite a lot of softwares, even for example, I usually use After Effects to combine the whole sequence, but you get a much better result in terms of quality. And also you have the possibility to edit and if some frames are uh, buggy or there is something wrong with them, you can just delete those and re-render them and it gives you a lot more control. So anyway, we are going to use today PNG because we just want a single frame. Then we are going to choose our resolution. So I'm going to choose a full HD. After that, we have our output directory. So this is something that, again, I'm just going to choose the desktop. And before clicking the capture movie button, we need to make sure that we are using the path tracer and not the default lights. So this is something we need to go into cinematic. And here we have use path tracer. So we need to check out this. Then we have the number of samples. I'm just going to do the same thing, which we have here. So I'm putting 64 and then I'm going into animation because at the moment it's going to render absolutely all the frames that we have down here. But if we want to have just one frame for a static camera like this one, we can put a custom start and custom end frame. And instead of having our 150 frames, I'm just going to do a 0001. So this way it will start in frame zero and it will render just one frame. After we are done with all the settings, we just need to click capture movie. Wait a little bit because it will take a little bit of time since it needs to calculate the whole path tracing. And after that, we are going to have the exported image. Now that everything is being done, this is how our render looks like. You can see that I have quite a lot of noise, so maybe having the denoiser was not a bad option. And then we were going to have a little bit more smooth result. Before the end of this video, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss some of the upcoming tutorials. The first one of those is going to be about translucent and glass materials using Path Tracer. Thank you for joining me in today's video. See you next time.